We want to bring back in live Professor Avi Loeb tonight, renowned theoretical physicist, Harvard professor, head of the Galileo Project. Uh, professor Loeb, always good to see you. And, you know, first, Professor, you've also been calling on NASA to release the image. The government is back open. Uh, no image. What do you make of this? Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I was told by two sources that, in fact, NASA plans to release those images in a few days in the middle of next week. So let's just uh, keep our fingers crossed because these should be the highest resolution images. And also they should uh, be from the side of those outflows uh, that will give us much more information because three Atlas passed within 29 million kilometers from Mars when the images were taken back on October 2nd to 3rd. And, uh, that offered an unusual opportunity to get a high-resolution view of it. Uh, the case that was made is that uh, they required some uh, processing, these images, and therefore they could not have been um, made public uh, be, uh, during the government shutdown. Uh, I prefer to believe that uh, storyline than uh, any conspiracy theories at this time. Okay, so the new images of 3i Atlas seem to show the tail is back. What is the significance? What do you make of this? Well, actually, we don't just see a tail. In the latest images, we see uh, of all the seven jets coming from the uh, surface of, of the central object, uh, some of them towards the sun, some of them away from the sun. What surprises me is that they are tightly collimated. Uh, and that is surprising because the object is rotating. The last time we checked, it has a rotation period of only 16 hours. And uh, that, uh, the, the length of these jets is a million kilometers. You would expect that uh, the material making up these jets uh, had to go across that distance over a period of a month. Uh, given the typical speed of outflows from comets. And uh, during a month, it would have been smeared by the rotation mm. of the object. So then the question is, what is going on? Uh, one possibility is that it's only the uh, pockets of ice facing the sun that are getting warmed up, but we see uh, jets going on the opposite direction, away from the sun. Another possibility is that perhaps the object broke up and what we see is the trail of material uh, from the fragments flying out. But the problem is that uh, we got the latest image and it looks like a single object in the middle. So we don't know what is going on. Of course, it's possible also that, uh, that these are thrusters from a technological object that are used to maneuver uh, or navigate and obviously, in that case, uh, they will maintain their orientation. So the verdict is still out, and I'm very much looking forward to getting more data in the coming weeks. You know, that's the way science should be done. It's like a detective story. Mm -hmm. And any of my colleagues who claims to know that it's a comet uh, of a type that is familiar to us, you know, is not really curious or imaginative well, about Well, let me, uh, let me ask you more about that. Last week, we spoke with Dr. Michio Kaku. He gave his input on the object when asked uh, if there were any indications it could be alien in nature. Let's listen to his reply. I think it's non-zero, but it's very small. Hmm. So far, it looks like an ordinary comet. It behaves like an ordinary comet. And except for these uh, a few anomalies, it, it does act like an ordinary comet. What is your response to him tonight? Well, I listed this morning 12 anomalies associated with the object, and anyone that wants to see them, they are on uh, medium.com, the, the latest essay. And uh, I suggest that uh, whoever says this is a, a familiar comet uh, would write a, a paper explaining all of these anomalies. Cause yeah, Professor Loeb, them... we're almost out of time, but out of I was reading this article right before our show tonight. Of the 12 anomalies, which one stands out to you the most is the most compelling, that this could be extraterrestrial in nature? Well, it's the fact that it's lined up with uh, the plane of the planets from the beginning. And it's also a very big object, much more than we expected, because the previous ones were a million times less massive. You know, both of these are fundamentally difficult uh, to explain out. So I'm saying let's wait and check what this object is in the coming weeks rather than uh, give the verdict already now. I hear it. Professor Avi Loeb, it's always a pleasure for me to see you. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. So combining the data from Lucy, Psyche, and Earth-based telescopes, scientists are hoping to better understand both the three-dimensional structure of the comet and the nature of the dust. It's a rare opportunity to compare ancient dust from a distant solar system to that from our own. 
Now let's go to the next picture from the MAVEN spacecraft at Mars. Beginning at the beginning of October, 3I Atlas passed within 20 million miles of Mars, which gave our Mars spacecraft an opportunity for a close-up. And earlier you saw the image that Ahmed shared from our Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. MAVEN is another Mars orbiter that has been studying the Martian atmosphere since 2014. Now, this picture is not a direct picture of the comet itself, it's a spectrum. You're seeing the, uh, the science wiggles that uh, Sean was just talking about. This is some of those science wiggles where the instrument, the spectrograph, the ultraviolet spectrograph on MAVEN has looked at the comet and also split up the ultraviolet light according to color. So you're seeing three different bands in this image. On the right, you're seeing emission from hydrogen gas in the atmosphere of Mars. Uh, in the middle, there's a fainter band uh, indicating that's coming from uh, hydrogen gas in interplanetary space. And on the left, that blob is the signature of hydrogen gas coming from comet 3I Atlas. It's a little blob rather than a big streak because the comet is a small object in the sky relative to great big gigantic Mars and interstellar space that fills the entire field of the instrument. That definitely tells us, first of all, that the comet is there. If there were no comet, there would be no little blob on the left side of the image. But it's also telling us it's one of the many ways that we're able to discern the chemical composition of 3I Atlas. And in this particular example, it's showing us the hydrogen gas that's coming off of, of the nucleus. Now, MAVEN's observations, combined with the earlier observations by Swift and Webb that Sean spoke about, will help determine the water production rate, how much water vapor is released from the comet uh, when the comet is warmed by the sun, which provides insight into the formation of the comet and its journey through our galaxy. Now, the European Space Agency's, Agency and, and NASA's Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, or SOHO, also successfully imaged 3I Atlas uh, from October 15th to 16th after it had passed Mars. And SOHO spotted the comet crossing its field of view from approximately 222 million miles away, or more than twice the distance of Earth from the Sun. Comet, comet 3I Atlas was expected to be too faint for SOHO to see, but this result was made using detailed image processing and overlaying, or we call it stacking, subsequent telescope images. And this image highlights the value of spacecraft and instruments designed to look directly toward the sun, as Nikki was saying before, not only to study the sun, but also to have the ability to see other objects crossing, in this case, behind the sun from the telescope's point of view. You'll be able to see the rest of the images on our 3i Atlas website, go.nasa.gov slash 3i dash atlas. And there will be more to come. Not all of the data have been downlinked yet through NASA's Deep Space Network, and there are more observations still in work. And also, it's a long way from where we are today, seeing the initial images, to then making sure that they are accurately calibrated and processed to do science with, and then doing the analysis, combining the data sets, understanding them, and finally producing the scientific understanding, the knowledge of what this all means, which will be, which will be published in peer-reviewed scientific journals. But the answers will come later on. We are still at this phase, uh, very much in the state where we're figuring out what are even the right questions to ask about interstellar objects. This is a snapshot of where we are very early in the scientific process. My next guest spent months pushing for these images to be released, so is he now convinced that it's not alien technology? Let's ask him. Harvard professor Avi Loeb joins me now. Okay, Avi, you've been telling me for months now that you think this might be an alien object. Is this a disappointment? No, because there wasn't much uh, new information released. Uh, in fact, uh, we knew most of the details that were mentioned today from uh, uh, the scientific uh, sharing of data from the Hubble Space Telescope, the Webb Space Telescope, 
And um, what they uncovered was the skin of the object, uh, basically that uh, some ices and perhaps some dust that evaporates uh, when the sun illuminates that surface. But um, even if you consider a spacecraft that travels through the cold interstellar medium, it would accumulate over time uh, ices and dust on it that would be released and you don't need large quantities to explain that data and you don't you are not supposed to judge a book by its cover so wait so are you saying the... are you saying it could still be an alien object well i'm saying the data that was uh, shared today did not uh, provide us with new information and uh, in fact uh, the nasa officials did not address the the basic puzzles about this object the mass of the object is a thousand times more than the previous one, a million times more than the first one. Uh, why are we so lucky to, the, to receive such a huge package? Why is it flying in the plane of the planets? Why is there much more uh, nickel than iron in, in, the, in, in what it sheds? There are lots of puzzles that were not even mentioned. And, uh, you know, as Sherlock Holmes uh, noted, there is nothing more deceptive than an obvious fact. They basically say that it's a familiar comet, but are not willing to address those anomalies. They didn't mention any of them, and, and there are no solutions as of yet. In fact, the most uh, exciting data was collected in recent days by amateur astronomers. They did not invest a billion dollars in space telescopes. They used amateur astronomer telescopes that you can buy in thousands of dollars, and they provided us with insights about the jets coming from 3i Atlas. We now have an opportunity in the coming days, the coming weeks, mm. to uh, observe these jets and figure out where they originate and uh, conclusively say whether they come from uh, pockets of ice on the surface of a rock or from thrusters. The, the, the comet or the alien object, because obviously you think the jury is still out on this, uh, it will fly closest to Earth on December 19th. What will we know definitively at that point when it's the closest yes. it'll come to the Earth? Yes. Um, or I guess uh, when they start, the, like, coming, you know, when they start landing or sending aliens out no, to... No, no. I'm I kidding, mean, um, but you know what I mean. I mean... Uh, yeah, a simple detail is to figure out where the jets are coming from, because if they come from uh, ice that is sublimated by sunlight, we know the characteristic speed of the volatiles that come out of that, and we know how much mass will be evaporated and uh, the composition of that. So if we find that we can explain all of these components with a natural origin, then uh, the case is closed. However, if we find a much larger speed than expected from a natural object, it might be that these, this is a technological signature. So I would say by uh, December 19th, we, we would have enough data. There would be a flood of data that would tell us uh, what this object is. But let's uh, wait and see. Uh, do, you think, you know, do, do you think NASA is open-minded, uh, or do you think NASA's just decided it's a comet and we're going with that? Well, um, bureaucrats or unimaginative scientists want us to believe in the expected. But the rest of us know that the best is yet to come. You know, life is worth living if we allow for the unexpected to surprise us. And, you know, the science is a learning experience. All I'm suggesting is let's collect more data to figure it out for sure. Okay. Because we, we cannot be sure right now. The next guest, Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, has suggested that 3i Atlas is actually some type of alien technology sent here from another solar system. And he's come on the show before to lay out the scientific reasoning behind that startling hypothesis. Well, this weekend he made headlines again when he said that the object could actually be on a mission to release, quote, mini probes that could invade Earth. Avi Loeb joins us now. He's head of the Galileo Project, director of Harvard University's Institute for Theory and Computation, also the best-selling author of the book, Extraterrestrial. Okay, I'll bite. What are these mini-probes you're talking about, and how would this even be possible? Well, there are two possibilities. If it's a technological object, then it might maneuver uh, itself. Uh, we haven't seen such a maneuver so far. But the other possibility is that it may release some other objects that reach uh, the planets and it will continue along its course to the next star. 
And uh, we just need to keep our eyes on the ball, the way that uh, basketball coaches often say to the team members, uh, because uh, we don't know, but it may well be just uh, a rock uh, which has some ice on the surface that evaporates, uh, in which case we will say it's natural. You know, I defined a new scale uh, last month that is now called the lobe scale, where zero is a natural object and 10 is a technological object. And at this point, uh, I give it uh, around a four. But if it looks like a comet as it comes closer to the sun, I'll reduce the rank uh, closer to zero. Well, four is not 10. So it's actually, you think there's more of a shot that it really is actually just a comet? Yeah, the, the reason was that uh, the uh, inferred size of the object was huge. It was between 20 and 46 kilometers unless there is a dense cloud of dust around it that is scattering sunlight. Uh, this is an object, if that is the size of it, that is a million times uh, more massive than the previous interstellar objects we've seen, and that's quite unlikely. There is not enough material in interstellar space so to bring size, such a huge the fact object. that it's an unusually large is what's making you doubt that you make that, or at least be open to the possibility that it's not just a comet? That's one aspect. And the second is that the trajectory is aligned with the plane of the planets around the sun. Now, we will get a good image of it when it comes close to Mars on October 3rd. We don't need to wait a lot. And there is a camera called HiRISE on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that can image it with a pixel resolution of 30 kilometers. So we should be able to tell how much light is reflected off the object and from that infer its size. And I very much look forward to that. You know, the fun of doing science is that we are guided by evidence and not prejudice. Uh, Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna is asking NASA to monitor 3i Atlas um, and to send an orbital spacecraft even closer to it as it passes. That would give. What are the chances that NASA will agree to do that? Because that would certainly give us even more data, right? Even more images. Yeah, this uh, came because she actually uh, spoke with me on the phone, and I mentioned. Oh, so the you paper put her up to it. Yeah, and I suggested that doing that. NASA has a number of facilities that it can use in space to get us more data, and uh, she did send a formal letter to Sean Duffy, the interim administrator of NASA. Uh, we are very much uh, in line uh, in terms of the way we think about this object and about the UAP that, uh, in fact, uh, 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 Representative Luna is the chair of the mm. task force that so, tomorrow will host a, a, a hearing. So did NASA agree to do this? Have you heard any word? Because time is short, right? This thing is going to be here pretty soon. Yeah, uh, well, I spoke with uh, the, the principal investigator of several of the missions, and definitely when the object comes close to Mars, the high-rise camera will be used, and okay. several other observatories will look at it. So I'm very much hopeful. I look forward to the data.